And it just so happens I know a guy that makes lift kits. So we're gonna do these. The biggest ones we sell on that. It's gonna be epic. All the parts are laid out. Well, almost all of them. There's a few more pieces. So we're gonna do the struts and everything while we're in there. Just to, you know, because the old ones are all rusted and all that, and they're just no good. I don't think a couple hundred thousand miles on this time. So I got Jake over here. He's gonna help us in the installation. And when I say he's gonna help us, he's actually gonna do all the work. <laughs> but the important thing to remember on these is the first thing you wanna do is the subframe kit. It just makes everything fit better once you're done. So we'll do the subframe drop in the back first because we've already got it jacked up. So we'll do, we're gonna do a one and a half inch subframe drop and then a three inch trailing arm drop along with our upper control arm bracket relocation kit and our toe adjuster bracket kit. Uh, and that's just to help it where it'll handle better on the highway and all those things. So that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, so um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the subframe out. We have the, uh, the jack under it right now. You'll need to take the jack out from under the subframe to do this but I'm just leaving it there so I can get all the bolts out and the subframe stays where it needs to without falling down while I'm trying to take the bolts out. And what's cool about these is the diff bracket has bolts that are just gigantically too long. They go way up in the body. So you can actually put the spacers in and reuse those bolts. You don't have to get longer ones. Now we've got all the weight on the jack right now, but I would suggest putting one of the new bolts that come with the kit in before we release anything so it doesn't get out of alignment. Basket. Yeah. Dude, I can't wait to see this thing lifted. It's gonna be so awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. I'll have to make some. Okay. Unless Power Cook gets some done. Well, that's not so bad. Six minutes. Once I got everything sort of figured out. And just like that, you got your one and a half inch rear subframe drop completed. Now we're gonna go ahead and focus on getting the camber arms on, the lower control arms and the shocks back on, and just getting everything else buttoned up. So now that we have the rear subframe spaced down one and a half inches, we're gonna go ahead and remove the brake line bracket to move it from being bolted down here. We're going to drill a hole right up here and bolt it in right there so the brake lines on the rear don't get stressed out to the point where they break. We're going to take the hard line and bend it just enough to where it doesn't break or kink, but so it mounts right up here. So just ever so carefully. And that should do it. Now just go ahead and mark where your hole needs to be at and go ahead and drill it. All right, so now you're just gonna kind of center up the brake line bracket wherever you think it should be. It doesn't really have to be too precise. I mean, you're just kind of trying to get it to have some slack on the brake line. So mine lines up pretty much right about there. So just go ahead and drill your hole. So now that the hole is drilled, you can kind of push that into place, get all your metal shavings out of the way, and then just thread your bolt back into it. One bolt would be more than good enough to hold that in place. You can do two, um, but for this application, there's not really enough room to get both bolt holes lined up. So 
one will be more than secure. And then just repeat the process for the other side and you'll have more than enough slack for as much lift as you can need. Also, don't forget to bolt in your e-brake cable back after you've relocated your brake lines. All right, so now we're gonna work on getting the three inch trailing arm spacers installed. So the way I like to do it is take out your trailing arm bolt and replace it with the longer ones. That way everything stays centered up. And then you'll take the other one out, should fall down into place. You can slide your spacer in and then put the other bolt back in. Ooh. Yeah, that trailing arm bushing has had it. It's gone. Get that thing out of the way. Well, that just one. gives it more flex, actually, just having it uh, you know, coming apart like that. It's, it's really ideal for our situation. Oh, yeah. So, to do the three inch trailing arm drop, you have to get rid of this bar. Most of the CRVs that I've ever worked on had these rusted out, so I've never had to run into this issue before. This is the first time I've ever seen a full one, so we're gonna take it off. Just like that. Go ahead and break the uh, bolts loose for the uh, toe adjustment. bushings were causing it to bind up and not wanting to let us drop the the rear trailing arm so you just break the bolts loose and make it so it can swing down without fighting you from the bushings being tightened up inside it so after you do that you can go ahead and take your trailing arm spacer pull the trailing arm down out of the way slide the spacer in there if this light would stop flashing <laughs> And take your other trailing arm spacer, slide it in the other side. All right, and just like that, you got your three inch rear trailing arm spacers on. Another pretty common thing when lifting a CRV. They have this pinch weld and this will dig into the front of your tire and gouge it all up. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our BFH and we're going to make it not stick out so much. And just like that, you got lots more clearance. So now that we have the trailing arm spacers on and the subframe spacers on, we're gonna to start to focus on the rear camber arm and the camber arm relocation bracket. The reason that we do this is once you lift the car past four inches, well, really three and a half, um, the rear arms get out of alignment because the lower control arm will be dropped with the subframe and the, uh, the trailing arm gets dropped, but this gets stressed down and far forward, causing the car to wobble really bad whenever you hit a bump on the highway. So to correct that, we take this arm and we bolt it in right here and it levels out the upper control arm. So the mount will go from there straight to there without any down and forward travel like it is right now. Since there isn't much really supporting the rear trailing arm right now, I went ahead and threw a jack stand underneath it. So we ran out of space on the memory card. So I got a few more things done off camera. We got the shock and the lower control arm mounted up on the passenger side. Still not bolted up to the uh, the trailing arm, but we went ahead and drilled the hole for the, uh, the camber arm relocation bracket right there. And now we're just gonna go ahead and get the bolt in and get this all finalized. Now we have the uh, camber arm relocation bracket on the passenger side, and we're gonna go ahead and put the camber arm in.
the camber arm relocation bracket is on and the adjustable camber arm is on. Now we're gonna focus on getting the shock mounted back up to the trailing arm. So when you lift the car or CRV about four inches, you'll see that the, uh, the shock body starts to hit the rear trailing arm. So what I like to do is I like to take a screwdriver, mark out right above where it hits and right below where it could hit the widest part of the shock body right here. And just kind of scratch it with a screwdriver so I can see where I need to cut. And then after that, I jack up the rear control arm. And then I take off the rear upper camber arm. And then you'll have more than enough room to get a cutoff wheel in here. And just kind of trim off those edges. So you're just gonna take your cutoff wheel, find the marks that you made, and just kind of cut in along those. I'm gonna come back in with a grinding wheel and I just kind of clean up the edges just so they're not so jagged and sharp. And after that, all you do is throw a layer of paint on there, keep it from rusting, and you're good to go. And you just put your camber arm back in, and that's it for this side. Got the rear lift all on. Tires are on, sitting on the ground. It's got an absolute ton of clearance. So now we're gonna focus on getting the front drop. To begin, I'm taking all the bolts, breaking them loose, and replacing each bolt one by one with the longer bolt. So when it all drops down, it'll stay in line, and you can just slide the spacer in one by one after that. Um, you also need to get these two studs taken out, stud in the bolt and all the studs on this side, so you can replace that with the longer studs. And then we'll be removing the steering shaft and replacing that with the longer one. Make sure your wheel's straight when you do that so it doesn't make your uh, steering wheel crooked. All right, I'm gonna have got the bolts out of the steering shaft and I have the steering wheel held with the seat belt so it doesn't spin and mess up your alignment. So now all you're gonna do is grab the steering shaft and really just wiggle back and forth as hard as you possibly can while pushing up at the same time. Yeah. Pull it out. You just gotta wiggle it back and forth to kinda break some of the rust and crust out of there. And just like that. Now the steering shaft's out of the way. You can continue on just removing each bolt and replacing it with the longer bolt so the subframe just falls all down all at once and stays lined up. And then you go back behind yourself, take each bolt out individually, slide your spacer, and then tighten it up. Take your jack, put a block of wood between your transmission and the jack, and just use it. Don't jack up the car with it. Just use it to support the transmission so when you take off this mount, it doesn't just fall. Um, so yeah, now I'm just gonna take off this mount and remove the studs, and we'll come back once we get to that. So one of the studs just backed out with the nut uh, already, so I'm gonna show you guys how to remove the other one. This nut's already off. I'm gonna put it back on. You don't have to go all the way back on it, um, basically what you're going to do is you're going to thread it down to where you can find some of the threads above it and you're going to take a chisel and you're going to beat those threads so it just, once you start backing the nut off, it gets to that part where the threads are messed up and it just backs the stud out from the transmission. So I'm going to take a chisel and a hammer and I'm going to beat in those threads real quick and I'll show you what it looks like after I'm done. Now the threads have been smacked with a hammer and a chisel a couple of times so you should be able to just take your 17 millimeter ratchet and just back it off. And just like that, studs removed. Normally you would replace these with longer studs, but we're gonna replace them with bolts just for our application. And install it without the spacers first. And then once we drop the transmission, we'll go back in and install the spacers. All right, and now we're gonna move over 
over to the driver's side motor mount and start working on that. We already have one of the studs installed on this side. Um, so just repeat the same process that we used for that stud on this stud and you can get that out no problem. I kind of slacked and I did not record me removing each bolt and installing each spacer, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You just remove each one at a time after you have the subframe fall down and just go back and replace each spacer and then tighten it up afterwards. And then should have a or a jack under the transmission. Just go ahead and lower that down slightly. You should have enough room to slide in your spacer. And then drop the bolt in. And your spacers are in, bolts are tightened down. Just repeat the process for the driver's side, same exact idea. And then after we do that, we'll go ahead and do the uh, steering shaft itself. Now that the subframe's dropped and the engine's dropped, our car didn't have torque mounts to begin with, so we're gonna be installing some torque mounts with the H spacers that come with the kit. So we'll go ahead and throw those on real quick. Most things with these cars don't make sense though. But... Yeah! That thing sounds rowdy. So now that the engine has been dropped an inch and a half, along with the subframe and everything else, we're gonna go ahead and take the extended steering shaft that comes with the kit, and we're gonna throw that back on. All right, so now you're gonna take your drive shaft carrier bearing, and then after you get those bolts taken out and the longer ones installed, I'm going to move on to the drive shaft safety loops. They'll hold up the drive shaft until you can get all of them in. Same process for that drive shaft safety loop right here, and then we'll move back to the carrier bearing in the center. It is now five months later after we filmed the rest of that video, and unfortunately, the footage is gone, we lost it, nothing we can do about it. So, today I'm going to go over the last parts of the install so that you guys can see what is left and how to do it. So, basically, we're going to start with the toe adjuster brackets, uh, probably one of the more confusing parts of the kit. Now, there's two options for how to mount these. One, you can bolt them in, and uh, the second is to weld them in. And I recommend welding them in if you're gonna take your car off-road like we do. We really beat the crap out of this thing, and it's important to have parts that we know aren't gonna come loose. Uh, the idea there was just to make it easy to install for the average uh, consumer who doesn't have a welder. But I would I absolutely recommend welding those in for that reason. Secondly, we never really got around to the installation of the actual strut spacers. Pretty straightforward, I would say. The bolts come in from the top and then the studs go through from the bottom and then, you know, the nuts just attach it there. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you one thing on the front that's very important to talk about with this kit. You can see the strut spacer in the front and you know, obviously you can see the struts are brand new. The factory struts were blown. We put new ones in, but we use like an ultra power brand or something from Rock Auto. New, but cheap. And what we found is that that little tab on the bottom of the strut where it centers to the fork that holds it to the lower control arm sheared right off as soon as we hit a heavy bump. And we noticed that the factory ones had a full collar that went all the way around and a lot stronger attachment point to support the weight of the vehicle on the fork. So what I did was looked around and found struts that had that same design as the stock ones. And what I ended up with was a set of Gabriel struts. They have that same design and they're so far so good, but 
More importantly, we discovered that there is a huge difference in height between aftermarket brand A, aftermarket brand B, and stock. The first set we use, I think the Ultra Powers, actually lowered this from stock. The thing was sitting a little low in the front with those struts, and I mean, you know, we just figured it, maybe the rears hadn't settled or whatever. So after we broke those, we replaced them with the, uh, the Gabriels. Those actually gave us an additional inch of lift beyond those original cheap replacement ones. So that's why we always say results may vary because a lot of people put these kits on and then replace the struts at the same time. So you're not getting an apples to apples. If you put the struts on without the lift kit, there would be a height difference. So there's too many variables for us to say X amount of lift because of those factors. So all total, we ended up with about four inches of lift in the front and about five inches of lift in the back before and after. All right, I have one more point to talk about here, and that is the Eagle Eye viewer might have noticed that we do not have sway bars front or rear on the shop CRV. And some people would argue that that is not safe, it's dangerous, et cetera, et cetera. Now, it's some, it, to some extent, I would agree with that. If your goal is to drive fast and handle corners, then it isn't safe to drive without sway bars. But for someone whose goal is to have maximum off-road performance, it is an advantage to not having them because it allows more suspension articulation over obstacles. Yes, if you're going to drive fast and you uh, want to take corners, then you, you, should, you should keep them on, you know, for sure, absolutely keep them on because it, it aids in, in on-road handling. Um, but my opinion is if you have a lifted vehicle with 75 series mud tires on it, you're not gonna go around corners fast. It's just not gonna be your, your ultimate goal. But having said that, driving this without sway bars on the highway, it doesn't act weird, it doesn't feel floaty. You know, a lot of that has to do with alignment. Uh, you know, if you don't have your alignment dialed in, it will feel weird regardless if you have sway bars or not. But this thing drives great, I have no complaints. In fact, the War Wagon hasn't had sway bars on it since 2015, and I've driven that thing thousands of miles across the country and through canyons and everywhere you can imagine, and it's never had an issue with handling without the sway bars. And I would also point out that there are several Honda Civic models that did not come with sway bars from the factory. So they're not a necessary thing for um, everyday use, but, as I said before, if your goal is to handle corners really fast, uh, well, first of all, you shouldn't be lifting your vehicle. But secondly, you definitely wanna keep your sway bars on. So that's just an explanation of the whole sway bar debate. And um, you know, obviously you guys have to use your own judgment on that. But my opinion is that they're not necessary if you're gonna go off-road. It just helps with um, off-road articulation. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I think we covered everything on the shop CRV install and uh, obviously if you guys want this kit it's hrgengineering.com you can call us it's 844-HRG-LIFT or email us at sales at hrgengineering.com so with that said guys I really appreciate you watching to the end and listening to me talk it's a lot of fun making these videos and I'm sorry it took five months to finish this one but uh, I'll see you in the next one Sometimes you just gotta give it a little persuasion. Sometimes that means Judy kicking it, Ninja kicking it, karate chopping it, and all kinds of other weird stuff. Uh, always when I'm filming. Always when I'm filming. Uh.